I, I don't think I can do anything as pretty as what you just heard. Um, although I, I, will, I will say that even though he says it's hard to get 512 nodes in a booth, if you come over to our HP booth, you, you'll see Moonshot where it's real easy to get 512 nodes. I think we've got you know, one this size with 128 in them or something like that. So, um, so next time we'll have a little Moonshot over here and you can have it live running there. Okay, uh, let's see. I want to get this into the right mode here. Help. Oh, ah, I'm seeing something totally different on my screen than yours. He's laughing. Yeah, sure. Is there anything else I should know, like how I go forward? Arrows work? <laughs> Arrows work just fine. Okay, yeah. all right. Yeah. Is it there a laser pointer here too? Just you know, use my fingers. Yeah, we can forward back. There is a laser pointer on there, but it doesn't. Okay. Laser I'll just don't really work on an LCD. All right, all right. Okay, so I'm going to talk about what we do at HP for managing hyperscale environments, and we have a tool called HP Insight CMU, which is what I'm going to talk about in a second. Um, I'm the uh, product manager for CMU and for other HPC software, uh, so that's um, that's what I do. Okay. So this is our, uh, you know, anytime you see an HP presentation around here, we'll start with this, so I should say a word about it. Is that me? Hello, hello? All right, sounds better, okay. Okay, so um, HP is all about the new style of, of IT. And why new style? It has to do with the fact that IT traditionally does whatever it does, but in the last couple of years, we've encountered challenges, everybody's encountered challenges, uh, which have to do with um, energy, just getting a lab full of high power systems with uh, GPUs and so on, consumes far more energy than before. It now matters how much energy costs, way more than it used to. And optimizations around energy are very important, and manageability around energy are very important. Uh, space, think density. Okay, now what does density get, what, what does density do besides just you know, get everything into a smaller footprint? It makes everything really hot. So managing, managing things thermally is another aspect of IT which really is new. Um, so there are some changes. Complexity of course because large systems, even larger than before, more, more nodes than before. So we have answers to all of those kinds of things at HP, and the one I'm going to focus on here has to do with manageability. How do you manage a large system well? So we think we know how to do that. Um, the product that we have had for a long time that does this, it's called HP Insight Cluster Management Utility. And since we like to say these things to one another, we never say all those words, we just say CMU. You'll hear that, CMU or Insight CMU. And You'll see here that um, it's been almost 12 years at this point that we've been actually providing CMU, selling CMU, using CMU in our labs. So it's been in development for, for a long time. Um, it's licensed right now at around 100,000 nodes. Now, you will see free software that's, you know, people will talk about it being on you know, a million nodes, but there's a, you know, we, we can measure how many people have paid for it, so, uh, because it's not, it's not free software, it's not downloadable without a license. Uh, and that's, we feel like that's a pretty nice number, and of course we're growing it all the time. Um, it was built and optimized for Linux, but just in this release that we're doing two weeks from now, it's called CMU version 7.2, for the first time in all these years, we are now provisioning Windows, but in a very lim for a very limited number of servers, have to do with Moonshot, technology that you can see in the, CM in the HP booth. And uh, so that's our first incursion into, into Windows. Uh, we're kind of a Linux tradition, and we have thought in the past that nobody who does Windows would particularly want what we do with Linux. We're being told different. Um, you, can get a, you can get, when you get CMU on an HP system, it comes integrated um, on the system. Okay, that's, that's I, oh yeah, I, well, I haven't said anything about it yet. So, what does it do? It does three things. <laughs> uh, provisioning, control, and monitoring. Okay, those are the, the, high, the high level items. So for provisioning, we can do um, unattended installations the, the way anybody can, or we can do you know, uh, you know, kickstart or auto-yast, all that kind of thing. But 
Um, where, where the tool really shines has to do with the scalable cloning, where we can take a bare metal system, a thousand nodes, and clone it in half an hour, for example. Um, but in, in HPC environments, being able to change the environment uh, quickly is, is important, and that you can't do with just unintended installations and so on. So that's one of our key capabilities that we've evolved over time, made better and better. Um, on the control side, we have both, uh, everything we do has got graphical interface and a command line interface. The benefit of a graphic interface is that you, if you don't remember something, you, it's right there, you can see it. The benefit of a command line interface is it tends to be quicker if you really know what you're doing, right? Um, and you can also set up scripts with the, with the, uh, the, the CLI options. Um, we, we describe what we do as frictionless control, and I'll, I'll show you some examples of that. But really, the minimum number of clicks that it takes to get something done on a cluster, that's always our goal. Um, monitoring, um, at a glance view of the entire system, you can zoom in to get, uh, to get you know, the component level, and you can zoom out and see things at the, at the system level. And I'll, again, I'll show you. It's customizable, which is something that, um, even though it's not open source, we make it so it's very easy to go in and have lots of scripts in there, uh, lots of pro scripts that can be edited, lots of uh, files that we tell you, you know, add this to the file and you can customize it. It's very simple and it's lightweight and efficient. So, um, okay, so, let's see. All right, so, I've mentioned most of this. What have I not mentioned yet? Um, we do things like firmware audits, for example, uh, which is sometimes very useful when you have a thousand nodes, you want to make sure everybody's got the same level of firmware. Um, we do disk, disk support, we get asked about that. We have disk support in the system as well as full disk support. Uh, for control, we have, again, firmware update capabilities from the menu. Um, we have scalable PDISH. A lot of people know PDISH as a tool. I'll show you some things about PDISH that we do that nobody else does. So, this is what our interface looks like. If you want to see more, um, I think these guys have some stuff that's live, that's running, that, those, that they can show you, integrated with Moab, that I'll talk about in a bit. Uh, we have some in our booth, we'll show you a full CMU demo. Um, but this is the basic idea here. So, um, on the left panel you have the nodes, and various ways of collapsing them into groups. Um, you can click, in, click on nodes in either groups, or you know, do the usual click, shift, uh, then click down here and get all the nodes in between. You know, usual semantics for, for clicking on nodes, and you select them, right click, and you get, and now you see how we're in Linux world, right? Right click, and uh, you know, we've got all these different levels of clicks. Um, but um, you, uh, you, can ch you get a drop down menu, and the items in this drop down menu pertain to all of the nodes you've selected. So if you want to power down some 17 nodes, you go, I want these three and those, you know, click, click, you, got, you select them, and then you bring down the right. Uh, with a right click, you get this menu, and you can power off. Or you can light up the LEDs so that the system administrator who's in the lab can see which, which node you just powered off. Or, well, if it's powered on, maybe. Um, okay, so, you could, so that's, one, that's one type of, uh, of control that we have. And as you see, it's just very simple in terms of that's the minimum number of clicks you could possibly get to be able to do this kind of thing. So this is a power command. If you want to do cloning, it's, it's the same sort of thing. If you have an image and you want to clone, if you click on that, it'll give you a little, drop, a little menu that says choose from the following images. You pick one and it'll clone to the nodes that you selected. And, um, and you could also broadcast, uh, you could select, uh, say, you usually don't want to do this for more than 10 nodes, but you can get uh, windows in each of the 10 nodes so you can see the console in 10, each node. So a lot of control that way. Um, one of these menus that was there was the Insight menu, and so you could say there, show the BIOS version, okay? Now this is a PDISH kind of command, so show the BIOS version. Uh, the nodes 30 to 34 have this particular one with that release date. Uh, nodes 35 to 41 have that release date, which is different. So with PDISH, there's a, there's a filter there that will set things up so that um, anything, if you have a, a difference, a different line, um, it will show up as a, uh, under, uh, under the, the list of nodes that corresponds to. This kind of, I'll, use, I'll take off from this to show a neat feature of CMU that's way beyond whatever PDISH does right now. It's fine if you have a simple one line uh, output from the t text output. Uh, if there's a change in it, say the date, it'll be in a, you know, th the differences will show up differently. But what if you've got lots of lines of output? Um, and 
and a few things change in each one. What would PDISH do? Well, PDIF, PDISH do? It would, it would show you output, you know, lots of output, 30 lines of output for each one of those nodes if there were, if there were any differences. So what we've done is we've got a, um, a scalable text analyzer. Um, a little, little hard to see, if I don't know how easy it is to see over there. From where I'm standing, it's pretty easy, actually. But, um, but here you do DMI decode, and lots of lines of code. H how are you going to describe if it's on many nodes? How, I don't know, here we have, I think, only six nodes, but it, it illustrates the point. How are you going to do that in a readable, useful way? Well, this will highlight the characters that are different. So if it's in black, that just says they're all the same on those six. But here you get different release dates, and if you want to know more about it, you can expand that to see what they are, but this says those release dates will be different. And so this is a, a different way of looking at things and extremely useful when you get lots of text from lots and lots of nodes. That's special in CMU and really something that you don't see elsewhere. Okay, monitoring. Um, so I've, I've described some of the control capabilities and, and um, the, the cloning capabilities. And on the monitoring side, I've we have a way of looking at things which is two-dimensional, which lets you see the view instantly, it updates every five seconds, and another way that lets you see things in three dimensions which shows you a history. Um, we also can do alerts and actions, which people ask about. So here's the interface for the monitoring with the 2D view. Let's see, I'm going to walk with this. Uh, well, let's see, I guess I can start. Oh. All right, so what do we see here? Um, this, this over here, we, it, it's currently set to display, I don't even know what this means, NUMA imbalance percentage. I'm not even sure how they measure that, but you can, somebody invented this metric for this purpose. It's very easy to add. Here's a some exhaust temperature. That's, that's more, it's more obvious what that is. You can go and measure the exhaust temperature. So you can measure health stuff and you can measure the, um, also the well, operating system parameters. Each of these spokes represents a node, okay? And the length of the spoke has to do with whatever the variable is. Uh, you might ask what happens when you go to more than 200 nodes and these slices get too thin, then we start to aggregate. So, there, so it scales. Alerts are down here. Now this is an alert, alert that CMU server connection is uh, initialized. It's, but you can, you know, there's other ones that might be more interesting, like you've exceeded some temperature. And you can also view the alerts in another way, but at least it'll just show up there. You can set it up so it sends you email. Um, all right, so, um, and then, you know, this, for example, this is a group of nodes, which you could expand, but it shows that there's some kind of a warning alert there, That'll, so it gives you that information. Um, next. Now, what happened, so I just showed you something, and let me go back here and, see, this is, every five seconds this will update. What if you want to know what happened five seconds ago, 10 seconds ago, 20 seconds ago? Well, you can see it in three dimensions. Here's. You know, th here would be what you were just looking at. Back there would be, you know, some time ago. You have the ability to rotate. Um, it means complete three-dimensional control. The rotate, look at it from any direction. You can click on something and change the color so that you can follow the color. Of, so, if, so you have three different metrics here. Frequency, read, CPU load, you can easily add more. Um, and you can, if you color this node, you'll see the same color appear in those. And when you rotate, you can correlate. So that, that's a really neat feature. All right, so moving towards the end of this talk and um, is, is our, moving on to the work that we've done with Adaptive, is we have a, pro, we have a program called the Connectors Program at, uh, with CMU. And the idea is you have all of these kinds of tools that other people, other companies have expertise in that we don't. Now, some people that build management software like to have a complete, it does everything kind of management software where their tool will do everything I've described and it'll do scheduling and it'll do this and it'll do that. Um, our notion is we try to go very deep in a few things and then partner with folks like Adaptive. They've been one of our longest partners. Um, they you know, ha have done a lot of very innovative work around integration of various kinds of capabilities uh, that they, together with the, their scheduler and integrating it with the sort of management software that we have. Uh, bringing the capabilities into the cloud. So we really have had a long relationship working with them. And um, they were one of the first ones to work with us on, on showing how to build a totally integrated solution that includes CMU and includes Moab. So that's what 
this is basically a set of interfaces and so on that we developed in a style and, um, and so on. And so I don't have a really great picture of the Moab connector. They, I, I've seen much better ones that you've shown and I'm going to get you to give me one. Um, it, for example, this is our CMU graphical interface that you've seen. There, if you, um, if you go up to this menu up top here, there's a, a special adaptive Moab option here that you'll notice that you get when you, when you install CMU and if you have Moab on the system. And when you click on that, you get these various kinds of Moab specific capabilities that you can click on. There's a set that's, that I find even more interesting but is not shown here, where there's a no, there's, there are Moab specific things you do that are node related. And so you can click seven nodes and you get a drop down menu and it'll be Moab specific things you can do on those nodes. So it makes it easy for you to use Moab without knowing some of the capabilities. That's the, always the benefit of a GUI. Um, it's, it'll be there in the menu and you, and you have these options. Uh, but like I say, I don't have the best slides. They do. So that's the overview. We provide provisioning, control, monitoring, and we connect with partner software. So this is the last slide, again, standard boilerplate. You know, what do, what do we deliver with, uh, with the new style of HPC at HP? Uh, scalable performance, so we have any, you know, all of the usual things, accelerators, the, the SL line of ProLiant Gen 8 servers, which scale, to you know, we have thousands and thousands of nodes in some installations, tens of thousands. Um, if you didn't, haven't seen what we've done for water cooling, we have a system at the National Renewable NREL, National Renewable Energy Laboratory, I think it is. And they have their Peregrine system, which is quite new, a few months old, which is HP technology, water, water, warm water cooled, and, and it's very, uh, very exciting and extremely energy efficient. So that's what that's about. And we just talked about manageability, and I'm done. Any questions? Okay. Now you get to collect your rewards. <laughs> yeah, you have a question. It's impossible to hear anything from standing here. <laughs> Sorry. You do not need extra hardware for this. You run um, any node, you can use, a, if you have a node that you want to use for both computation and management, you can do that. We don't recommend it particularly because it can get confusing. For example, if you decide to reboot the node that you're managing from, that, that could cause chaos in the rest of the system. So we typically, people like to isolate that. But there's no special hardware needed. Um, but like I, typically, people will have a management node where they only do management things from it. It's not necessary though. Any questions? Okay. Great. Thank you, Bill. Appreciate it. Everyone give him a hand.